Coming up to down the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig, we play our last two games of the Bundesliga season and hopefully can guarantee ourselves a spot in European football for next season and potentially, more importantly, see how much money we've got to spend in the transfer window. and welcome to episode 70 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and come out today to end the seventh season of the say We play our last two games, taking on Fortuna Dusseldorf away from home, those guys in 12. And then we host Cologne currently in a relegation playoff spot. So it should be two games that we can win. And just one win from these two games will be enough for us to at least secure some European football for next season. So if looking forward to that coming up, in today's episode as well is a wrap-up of the season with the end-of-season review. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we've only played one game in the Bundesliga off the back of yesterday's episode. We did take on RB Leipzig and Eintracht Frankfurt in that one. If you missed it, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner, thankfully off the back of a loss to RB Leipzig. We did pick up a late point against Eintracht Frankfurt. And once I bring up the league table soon, you'll be able to see that they are now unlikely to catch us because of goal differential. We're six points clear of those guys and five points clear of the teams who are down between 8th and 10th on the Bundesliga table. But unfortunately, we actually could have wrapped things up in our most recent game where we did take on a Hoffenheim team at home. We bet 5-0 away earlier this season. But I don't think the refs actually wanted us to win this one. We were missing a few players through suspensions for this game. But thankfully we're on the front foot throughout the first half and got a goal just before half time. Really good individual effort that from Krasnicki off the back of a long ball over the top from Campanelli. But then this goal here. When I saw this first time on the bus this morning when I was playing. I had no idea why that wasn't ruled out for offside. It actually turns out one of our players got a slight touch on it. But still that's a very unlucky goal to concede. And then Ivizic lets for a free kick from Ayapay Dean. And we blow a 1-0 lead at halftime and get beaten 2-1. Still a little bit filthy about that first goal that was scored by Hoffenheim. But to be fair, it was a mistake from one of our defenders. You can see in particular with suspension, we were missing Tom Gale as well as Racine Bullock. But thankfully, some of those other teams in and around us also drop points on that match day. We'll just go over and show you guys the results. From that previous week, just looking for some teams here who were in and around us. Schalke picked up a 5-2 win. Those guys now are in the hunt because of their goal differential, albeit six points behind us. So just one point for us during the course of today's episode would be enough. But also, we've also got Hertha Berlin in that mix off the back of a 1-0 win over Bayer Leverkusen. They could jump above us because they are only five points behind us. But hopefully, with the teams that we are playing in today's episode, we can pick up at least one win or at least a couple of points from these two games and make sure we've got some European football for next season. But unfortunately, that Hoffenheim result does mean we do have to outperform them now to get back into Europa League spot. That or Bayer Leverkusen need to slip up quite a bit in the last couple of games of the season. But first up today, we do take on a Fortuna Dusseldorf team who are all the way down in 12th. This was a team who came up with us from the two Bundesliga last season, albeit they did finish below us in second on the league table. Also worth noting going to this first match day of today's episode, some quite kind fixtures in terms of the teams who are trying to make ground on us. We've got Schalke taking on Hertha Berlin, so that will rule out one of those teams from being able to to catch us up, you'd almost actually hope that it's Schalke, because then we might still be able to get through with just one point from our final game if we don't pick it up here against Fortuna Dusseldorf and also Hoffenheim the day after our game. They take on Eintracht Frankfurt, the other team who are in the hunt for that last European spot. So all the teams around us are taking each other on. We've got the easier fixture on paper as we take on Fortuna Dusseldorf. Hopefully we can make the most of that. They are going with five at the back, it looks like, and three up front. So it's an interesting formation, but hopefully off the back of some losses recently against Bochum and RB Leipzig, albeit they kept it closer against RB Leipzig than we did. We can pick up a result, and that will hopefully be enough for us to qualify for European football next season, albeit 
going to have to do it with a couple of injuries and suspensions when we make our way down this team list. And you can see Tyler Dibbling is still out. He is going to be out for this first game of today's episode. It's a two-week gap in between these games, so he should be back for that second one. But also Billy Comedio is suspended. So again, a bit of a makeshift centre-back partnership for this first game today. Tom Gale is back, but Zane Monlui will fill in in that central defence role. But apart from that, we are at full strength. A couple of changes too on the bench. Nino Gurk still there in place of Tyler Dibbling. And also Yakuba Salui is on the bench these days over Thibaut Cliche. Just feel like he's a bit better bench impact and a bit better form recently than the Togo International. So hopefully we can pick up a result on this first game of today's episode and maybe try and get into a Europa League spot in that second one where we do take on Cologne, but we get stuck in to the first game today and hopefully wrap things up and not leave it until the final day of the league season, which you would expect us to do. It's a quite kind final two games of the season that we do have compared to some of those other teams who are chasing us. So hopefully we can make the most of that and bounce back from that slightly disappointing defeat there to Hoffenheim. As I said, that goal, which looked like it might come from offside. Unfortunately, the defender did get a touch. That did look like it threw us off in that second half. And despite the fact we were the better team based on stats, we did suffer a 2-1 defeat off the back of that free kick from Iopay Dean. It does now mean we've lost three of our last four games. Just that draw yesterday against Eintracht Frankfurt. That was quite a big one because it did mean those guys now are unlikely to catch us up, as you can see there on that table with their goal differential. But those other teams in front of us, their goal differential not nearly as bad, so we really need to pick up the points in today's episode in at least one of these games. And we'll also keep an eye out on these other matches on this day to see if there's a couple of draws that would also be enough for us to make sure we'll be in Europe for next season if one of Hertha Berlin, Schalke or Eintracht Frankfurt do pick up a win. That will take things into the final day of the season. But so far, this has been a pretty even game, 20 minutes in. And so far, there's been no action. Just as I say that, though, eventually the first highlight is a free kick to the home team in the all red. They pump that one deep. Thankfully, that will be Campanelli, who will tidy that one up for us. Plays it back to Ivisic, who pumps it deep down that right-hand side. Krasnicki actually wins that one, but unfortunately, Amadori can't quite react. And it is now Fortuna Dusseldorf who look to do something on the counter-attack. They control that one nicely down the right-hand side, this near side. And Molokshev on the ball plays that one over the top somehow. They win that one in the air. And Bianchi will get in behind. He picks up his 19th goal of the season. Our makeshift defense yet again, that centre-back partnership. We really struggle when it's not Tom Gale and Comedio. And we go 1-0 down in the first highlight of the game for there. We should have had a chance to win that ball back. Two players on one, but unfortunately, we lose the aerial battle. And that time, Tom Gall can't keep up with Bianchi. And we go 1-0 down at the 22-minute mark. But hopefully, we can bounce back off the back of that, albeit Sebastian Escobar has just picked up a yellow card. So we'll get him to ease off tackles, definitely. Don't want to go down to 10 men in today's episode like we did in that Leipzig one yesterday. And we make our way just past the half hour mark. Still 1-0 behind. And there's a highlight not too long. Off the back of that Racine Bullock, you idiot. And we're in all sorts of trouble on this match day now. As we have to play the rest of this one with 10 men. So because of that Daniel Cueto, we're going to have to take him out yet again. He must be getting sick of these red cards to our midfielders. Miguel Chaiwa will come on for him. And also while we're here, we might actually take off Escobar on that yellow card. He's only been fair of late. For Nico Benedetti. So we'll use two subs here. Seems we have to make one anyway. And we are now 1-0 down with 10 minutes left in the first half. And also playing with 10 men. And Weishaupt puts that one into the mixer. Thankfully we get a block on after he gets in behind our defence. But Fortuna Dusseldorf here. Do now start to camp inside our half. Long range shot there from Alio Traore. Ivisic gets a good touch on it. But can't keep it from going in the back of the net. And we are really trying to bottle our place in Europe for next season, to be fair. It might not be the worst thing, just focusing on domestic football yet again. But also, some European money would be quite nice if Izic gets a big touch on that long-range shot, but unfortunately still finds its way into that right-hand corner. And this has been a pretty poor first half. And maybe going to need to start having team meetings off the back of this first game of today's episode. Hofer Berlin as well. 1-0 up, that's definitely not the result we want those guys 
can go above us if we don't pick up a win in that Cologne game, but this one already probably a bit of a write-off, and it might be going down to the final day of the season. We'll take off Dorenzo on a 6.3 for Yuri Bas and also Bushuari for Osmond Tilgan. Both those players down our left-hand side, they are struggling, but that was a dreadful first half. I'm even going to throw a water bowl and see if that gets anything out of these guys in the early stages of the second half. 2-0 down and needing a bit of a miracle with only 10 men away from home. And this one is again for Tuna Dusseldorf, who are on the ball in this first highlight. Tilgan nearly wins that one back. They put that into the mix. So thankfully, Tom Gale heads it away, but they get it back there inside of our half. It's a big deflection. It falls to Bianchi. And Tom Gale is also having a bit of a shocker. No idea how he's let that shot get off there, off the back of that big looping ball that's played here off the back of this attempted pass from Jensen. Tom Gale should be clearing that one, but for some reason Bianchi can get a shot off. Don't need to see that one anymore. And we are now 3-0 down early in the second half. And it's going to go to the final day of the season. This has not been ideal ever since that first half of that Hoffenheim game, losing that one. And now this has been a complete embarrassment. Hopefully they don't score too many more because that could impact our goal differential if Hofer Berlin aren't in striking range, because that would make things interesting if they picked up a win and we could only draw against Cologne, but hopefully we can pick up a win down near the relegation zone on that final day of the season. But a chance for them here to make it 4-0, but thankfully Jensen puts that one over the bar, but we are well and truly on the back foot here with only 10 men in this game, and yet again, Fortuna Dusseldorf are on the attack. Weishelt, who's having a good game, Plays through Bianchi in search of a hat trick. Ivizic gets a slight touch on that one. Thankfully, it comes off the bar. Doesn't quite make its way over the line, but 3 0 with still a half hour left. This could get ugly. And as I said, now keeping a big eye out on our goal differential going into that final day of the season, unless Hertha Berlin do get pegged back, that would also be quite useful. We eventually clear our lines there, and this highlight does finish. Still 3-0 down with a half hour left. And while we are here, we might make our final substitution. Nicolo Amadori today not really having an impact on a 6.4. We'll bring Salue on and also may as well chuck some more of our players on some more attacking duties to see if we can at least pull a goal back in the latter stages of this one as that could help, as I said. With that goal differential, good chance again there for Bianchi. I think that was to try and pick up his hat trick. But thankfully that time Ivozic does make a good save. But 20 minutes left, it's definitely fair to say we're not going to pick up a win in this game. We'll just get the uh, Yuri Bars to ease off tackles because we don't want any more suspensions going in to that final day of the season. But it is going to be a defeat, which will make things very interesting on that final day, especially because Hofer Berlin are still 1-0 in front of Schalke. And Schalke pick up a late injury. Thought there it might be a red card, just an injury. But a red card costs us in that first half off the back of going 1-0 down, this time it was Racine Bullock, and from their trail ray, with a long range effort, made it 2-0 at halftime, Bianchi made it a double for him, early in the second half, he definitely got the better of Tom Gale in that game, hopefully a lot more solid at the back, when we do get Comedio back, for that last game of the season, but that was a really poor display, as I said, might be time to have a team meeting, before we come back for that Cologne game, which we now, might need to win because Hertha Berlin are in striking distance and do have the better goal differential. But thankfully, that's the only team we need to worry about on that final day of the season. But it is going down to that final day as we suffer a humiliating 3-0 defeat at Fortuna Düsseldorf. And we've gone for a week and are ready to play our final game of the season off the back of what happened in that first one today. We did have a team meeting. Thankfully, the guys responded quite well. Dynamics have gone up very significantly, so maybe should have done that sooner. And also, we did play a friendly, picked up a 15-0 win, albeit Daniel Cueto did pick up an injury, but thankfully, it's one he can play through, so he is available for this final day of the season. But hopefully, that just boosted things a little bit more getting 15 goals against a bunch of local farmers, it does look like, but unfortunately, with that red card in that previous game, we have got obviously a suspension to Racine Bullock, but not just that. Also, Sebastian Escobar, that yellow card does mean he also misses his final game of the season, so because of that, 
We have got our backup midfielders in there, in Miguel Chaiwa and Nico Benedetti. That does mean that the likes of Isaac Pinchard and Nicholas Conradi come up from our second team and our under-19s for this final game of the season. Hopefully, we don't need to use them, and if we do, we're in a nice, safe position to make our way into a European competition for next season, but definitely not ideal. And also, of course, we do have Billy Camillo back, so our centre-backs do look a lot stronger for this final game of the season. But another thing that works in our favour, the team that Hertha Berlin are playing are the champions, and they're away from home, so ideally... Even if we don't pick up a win here, which we should, Cologne already guaranteed to be playing in a relegation playoff. But Hertha Berlin take on Bayern Munich. You'd like to think if luck's on our side here, we might still go through even if we do not pick up a win. But surely we can beat Cologne at home in our final game of the season, albeit they have picked up some impressive points of late, not winning, but picking up draws against the likes of RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich. So maybe this won't be quite as easy as I was hoping, but surely this is the type of fixture we can make the most of on the final day of the season and make sure we will at least be in a conference league playoff to try and get into the league phase of that competition for next season. Also, we'll keep an eye on Hoffenheim, albeit I think the goal differential of those guys also won't suit us. Even if they do lose their final game against that Fortuna Dusseldorf team who did just hand us a bit of a lesson, albeit when we were down to 10 men. But it's time to get stuck into this final game of the season. As you saw before, as I said, Daniel Cueto is injured. It is a damaged elbow, but thankfully can play through that. All the guys are quite well rested, despite the fact we played that friendly thing as there was a two-week gap in between that second to last and this last game of the season. We'll just sort out here some player numbers, hopefully. Won't have to use these guys, and if we do, the game should be over by that stage. Hopefully that increase in dynamics will help us beat a team who are going to be forced into playing a relegation playoff, and I'm pretty sure we picked up a decent result against those guys earlier in the season. Even if we didn't, this should be easier for us back at home, albeit our home form in the second part of the season hasn't been too great, so it's another thing we do need to consider going in to this last day clash. As you can see, our form of late Really poor, hopefully we can turn it around. I think we can defend a little bit better in this game, especially with no suspensions in our defensive line. But of course, those changes in defensive midfield, Benedetti and Chaba come in for the suspensions to Escobar and to Bullock. There are Cologne, they are going with a 4 3 3. And hopefully we can pick up a win to make sure no matter what happens in that Bayern Hofer Berlin game, we will go through to a European competition for next season as we're about to get the action underway and we do again we're going to keep an eye out on those other scores just in case things here don't quite go to plan but an early highlight here are thrown in our favor and at the moment we're holding the ball quite well something we haven't done too much of late a nice ball there from Amadori for Daniel Cueto he's got an injury but he buries that and that's exactly the start we want in a high pressure game we go 1-0 up nice and early and hopefully Cologne are down the table that far that their heads might start to drop in this one. Nice pass there for to Amadori and Queto, the goalkeeper. Interesting effort. That one dives behind him instead of to his right, but we'll take that off the back of some suspect happenings in our last couple of games. And we go 1-0 up. And also a penalty which Bayern Munich do tuck away. So thankfully, looks like things are going to plan for us here. And also, they've just picked up a second Bauer with a double nice and early. So things going to plan here in the early stages on this final day of the season at the 20-minute mark. Still with that 1-0 lead. Another highlight does start. Dorenzo to Gaul. Now Benedetti plays that for to Queto. Good passing so far in this one. Maybe that friendly result has boosted confidence. Bushuari with a long-range effort from a tight angle. That one actually forced the goalkeeper into a save. But unfortunately, it just goes wide and we still hold on to our 1-0 lead. But another highlight here starts very shortly off the back of that, Dorenzo on the ball does win it back here. So thankfully today, we are winning those 50-50 battles. Now Miguel Chaiwa plays that over the top nicely. For Albin Krasnicki, the assistance flag hasn't gone up. And hopefully, that will make it 2-0 halfway through the first half. It does. And hopefully, that's a scoreline we can hold on to. The first time in a little while, we would have scored two goals in a game. Krasnicki, nice first time finish from that ball from Miguel Chaiwa so far. Those defensive midfielders are doing a good job in place of the suspended players. Maybe some of those players might not be here for next season, depending on our transfer budget. And especially 
if we are going to be in Europe, a good chance for us to improve the squad, albeit it might be tough trying to keep that homegrown player number for the first team. That's something we need to keep an eye out on now. And to be fair, or it might take a little bit longer for us to have to deal with that in European competitions. But yet again, we are on the attacking company with the ball here just outside of the box. Unleashes one looking for that top left corner. It just goes over the bar. But thankfully, we are still 2 up. And so our Bayern Munich, it does look like, thankfully, they will bail us out a little bit on this final day of the season. Also, we're actually picking up a decent result here against Cologne. Rolke there does get off a shot. Thankfully, a good block in there. We'll see if anything else does come from that highlight, I suspect. That would have been the big chance. This highlight did start for tackle there from Chaiwa, but it is still Cologne here on the attack. Vast on the edge of the box. Plays that one back to Rolke into the mixer. And Durle there with a header, but thankfully... That one goes pretty safely over the bar at the moment. We are well and truly in that seventh position on the Bundesliga table. And so far, very happy with how this game is going. Hopefully, no turnarounds in that other game. And we can keep these players out here for as long as possible and make sure our defense is nice and solid. That's something we've had to change a bit over the last few games. Obviously, with those suspensions, it hasn't worked so far today. Does look like in this game... It's going well, so no changes here. We'll keep things the way they are for as long as we can in the second half and hopefully keep a hold of this advantage. An early chance here from a free kick. It is Bushuari, usually would be Escobar, but of course he is suspended. Not a bad effort there either. Looking for that top right corner, but the Cologne goalkeeper comes up with a good save. It does mean though we get a chance from a set piece. Looking for Tom Gale at the far post, but unfortunately the goalkeeper also does a good job there. But now we're about 10 minutes into the second half so far. Cologne yet to get a shot on target via Leverkusen beating Gladbach. So that means they are definitely now out of range. But to be fair, it was always unlikely we would catch any of those teams who were above us. Just checking here on player fitness. And for the moment, everyone is doing a decent job. So I don't think we need to change anything. Still with a half hour left, just make sure there's going to be no defensive hiccups for as long as possible, so we do pick up a win, and with around about 20 minutes left, there is a highlighter thrown inside the final third, that one a bit too deep, Camillo is quite a long way up, so maybe a chance here for Cologne to do something on the counter attack, and Pippen Block does get in behind, Ivisic comes out, gets nowhere near it, and maybe we should make some subs to try and fix the defence, because that was absolutely awful. Ivisic comes out, but thankfully he was offside. It won't count, never in doubt. And thankfully, we still hold on to our 2 0 lead. As you can see, actually quite a significant way offside as well. So thankfully, still up by two goals to nil Cologne, still yet to have a shot on target. But now a couple of players are down to red hearts. It might be time for us to ring the changes. So we're going to bring on Atilgan for Bushuari also. Pinchard will come on for Benedetti today. He is our deep line playmaker option. Imham for Quato on a red heart also with that injury might not be a bad idea. And we might also change our wing backs while we're at it, seeing as we don't want to break up those center backs. So we'll bring on Huxa as well as Bass for the last couple of minutes of this game. But hopefully no defensive errors despite all those changes and we can hold on and pick up a win. Don't care how much by, but ideally by at least 2-0 to make sure we don't have any heart flutters late. Big chance here for Amadori, but unfortunately that one does come off the crossbar when he did look to chip the goalkeeper. Still with the ball as we start to make our way inside the last 15 minutes. Yeah. But Alban Krasnicki has picked up an injury, which could make things very interesting inside these last 15 minutes. Because of that, we'll just drop Florian Huxer back to support and also might go back in there and also make sure we are focusing down that left-hand side, but that's not ideal, albeit in the last game of the season, probably the best time to have an injury like that. And thankfully, Cologne still not doing a lot here in terms of attack. And it looks like we are just going to do enough to qualify for Europe next season. A 2-0 win on the final day off the back of a very poor run in the month prior to this final game of the season. We eventually just do enough, kind of similar to when we were trying to wrap up the two Bundesliga title last season. We kind of tried to bowl it, but thankfully, this time, despite the fact our advantage wasn't quite as good, and we were definitely not favoured to make Europe come the end of this first season in the Bundesliga. That is what we are going to do off the back of a 2-0 win over Cologne. Also helped out by that result, Bayern Munich picking up a win 
over Hofer Berlin. Unfortunately, Hoffenheim, they did suffer a defeat, but that goal differential does mean they will be in the Europa League while we are in a Conference League playoff. But thankfully, we do enough with that 2-0 win over Cologne on the final day of the season. Not too sure if it's that much of a shock looking at the table, but it does mean with some European football here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, for next season. And in the inbox off the back of that second game of today's episode, about to get stuck into the end of season stuff. Still not quite sure if that's actually that much of a shock, us being a team who might not be in the Bundesliga for next season, but thankfully we get the job done. Obviously that team meeting and maybe that friendly might have helped boost the confidence going in to that final day of the season. Also, of course, we did get some players back from suspension, which also helped Alvin Krasnicki injured Three to four weeks, he'll be fine for the start of next season. We qualify for the Conference League. I do think, though, still we have to play a playoff, albeit that could be dependent on the coefficient we did see in yesterday's episode. Germany might be getting an extra spot in the Champions League anyway, so there is a chance that final day didn't make too much difference, but it could mean that maybe her for Berlin will get a chance to go into the Conference League through a playoff we might get there automatically. Hopefully that's something we can wrap up before the end of today's episode. And we get 54.13 million for that finish. But we haven't quite got our transfer budget yet. So we'll come back shortly and reveal that as well as any other things that do come through before we get stuck in to the end of season review. And only a few clicks off the back of the end of that Cologne game. As you can see, still got that article there about our money for finishing 7th in the Bundesliga. We have got our transfer budget, so I'm hoping this is a really good one to try and strengthen the squad going into Europe for next season. Otherwise, we might be struggling with the depth we've got in our squad here currently at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Ideally, it will be enough money to make sure we can do a serious overhaul to make sure our squad can handle both European football and the Bundesliga for next season. And it is a good transfer budget that is by far the largest we've had so far in the save, obviously being our first season up in the Bundesliga, that is somewhat expected, but 27.92 million and 550 pounds in the wage budget per week. If we have a look at what that means for our current budget, 308,000 pounds a week spare, we can certainly do a bit of damage with that. Hopefully that scouting of the world we've been doing over this past season will help us pick out some good young players and this squad can improve quite a bit. Might be quite a busy transfer episode coming up at the start of next week. All things going well. Could be quite a bit of changeover as we try and get the squad ready for a European campaign as well. As trying to stay up in the Bundesliga yet again, but thankfully that's a nice transfer budget about 10 times. Our best one previously, about £28 million pounds to spend on Monday in the transfer special. And a little bit off the back of getting our transfer budget for next season, we now have the expectations of a little glimpse here of what they will expect from us in the Conference League as well. As the Bundesliga, I don't think I'm going to be able to change any of that stuff up the top as per usual, but they want us to attempt to avoid relegation from the Bundesliga. Again, that's definitely something I think we can do, especially if we make the most of that transfer budget. Also, build a new stadium, so that could be something that does take place over the course of of next season and our transfer episode early next week. But also, they want us to reach at least the knockout stages of the Conference League. So we can't just bin off Europe next season. We definitely need to take it seriously. To be fair in the Conference League, that's a competition. We could go quite deep in being a team from one of the top five leagues. But obviously, we probably need to improve our squad at the moment. It would be one of the weaker ones of the teams up in the Bundesliga, but we've got a few interesting expectations on us for Europe next season, but thankfully don't need to worry quite as much about the Bundesliga finishing position, but hopefully we can go on a decent run in the Conference League. And we've eventually made our way forward to the end of season review for 2028-29. There you can see no trophies unlike last season, where we did, of course, pick up the two Bundesliga, but still pretty good effort in our first season up from that division, we get Conference League football, hopefully provide we win our playoff for next season and hopefully we can stay up with that nice transfer budget as well. We do have to work with lots of signings we did make early this season and Nicolo Amadori on a free was apparently the pick of those to be for your good output, 15 goals and free assists, also quite a good average rating. Josh Griffiths did a decent job when we used him to be fair, I was supposed to use him more as the cup goalkeeper. Hopefully, 
I remember that next season if he's still here, but he also was pretty good when we did use him. But to be fair, most of the signings that we did make have got a very good grade, including Sebastian Escobar, our first Wonder Kid signing here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, even though he missed that final game of the season. But thankfully, most of our transfers had a good season here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, got rid of a couple of players, in particular, Osher Davida for 2.2 million. That did allow us to sign Escobar late in that transfer window at the start of the season. Also, Lewis Warrington left as well as Matteo Coachella on loan, and Lucas Search also left the club after we kind of replaced him with Billy Camillo. Those guys only went okay at their new clubs this season, so I think it's fair to say we got rid of the right players here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, and also Matteo Coachella out on loan, hopefully. Utrecht do trigger that clause that we did put in that loan deal so they can get him on a permanent for next season considering he was quite upset once we tried to replace him with Sebastian Escobar going forward to the season's results. Thankfully the Bundesliga went a lot better than expected and we are in the conference league at least the playoff for next season still waiting for an update on the coefficient albeit as you can see Eintracht Frankfurt are in the Champions League for next season that's because they won the Europa League final, so Eintracht Frankfurt didn't even need to be in the battle for one of those European spots through their league performance. But as you can see, it was a little bit of an up and down season. We got on a good run, though, around about November and December, just before that winter break. Then we came back from it, got thumped by Dortmund, but then off the back of that again, went pretty well, picking up decent results until about the last month of the season, April, that lost to RB Leipzig in the derby did send us downward a little bit, but thankfully we just did enough on that final day of the season. Also helped out by Hofer Berlin taking on Bayern on that final day, and we do end up in seventh and get some European football for next season, albeit as I said, Hofer could still get some of the coefficient situation that we did see during the latter stages of yesterday's episode, the Cup. Honestly, it was actually a little bit disappointing. We beat an easy team in the first round, got helped by red cards in the second and third rounds against fellow Bundesliga teams but then cop one ourselves against Armenia Bielefeld and lost to those guys. In the quarterfinals, and as you can see, Bayern Munich picked up a 1-0 when they get their hands back on that trophy instead of Eintracht Frankfurt, who have won it over the last couple of seasons, but still making the quarterfinals for a second year in a row. Not too bad, just a bit annoying how we went out because of the red card to, I believe it was Sebastian Escobar. The biggest win was in that first round of the DFB Pockley, our first game of the season, where we took on Memmingen. The match to remember, opening day of the season in the Bundesliga, a 1-0 win over Dortmund. I would say that's fair enough. And our goal of the season came in a frustrating free all draw against Mines, where we did concede two goals late. It was the opener from a free kick to Sebastian Escobar. It was just outside of the box, but it was a really good effort that went into that right-hand corner to be fair. We probably scored some better goals than that at some stage during the season, but can't quite put my finger on them. Truth be told, we did play a fair bit of football this season with those cup games as well, so that will do for the goal of the season. Sebastian Escobar with that free kick going forward to the finances. Most of the stuff, very good as you would expect, albeit broadcast revenue down quite considerably. That seems very, very strange considering we were in the Bundesliga this season. Maybe that will get bumped up before the season ends. But sponsorship, all the other stuff has gone up. In particular, that competition prize money quite significantly still. Only a three-star reputation club. But you'd expect that to go up come the start of the next season when we do make our way into European competition. The top shirt sellers, Queto, Krasniki, Tilgen, Amadori, and Bushuari going forward to our best 11 for this season, in goal, Vizic, of course, that is expected being our first choice for most of the season. The back four makes sense. It's what we played for most of the season as well. Dorenzo and Campanelli at wing back and Gale and Camillo in central defence. Given what happened in that last month of the season with suspensions in that area in particular, no doubt that was our best centre back pairing in the defensive midfield. Benedetti pairs up with Escobar, so not quite right there. Both those guys are deep lying playmakers, but obviously, both Chira and Bullock. Didn't have the greatest seasons, especially how Racine Bullock ended it with that red card in that Fortuna Dusseldorf game. And the front four makes a bit more sense. Bushuari out left, Krasnicki out right with the best rating of our players this season. Daniel Queto in the cam roll and our new signing Niccolo Amadori up front with 15 goals and three assists going forward to the awards. The fans player of the season with that highest rating is Albin Krasnicki and the young player of the season does go to Daniel Cueto, who surely 
can't be too far from being a little bit too old for that award going down a bit further to skip those awards you've already seen top goal scorer was Amadori most assists was Krasnicki with nine also got most player of the matches with five and going over to the competition awards so far none of those but a couple of record breakers the most goals by a player in the match was Amadori he picked up a hat trick and Sebastian Escobar also picks up a couple on that right hand side as well the highest transfer fee paid for a player as you would expect at 1.4 million pounds you'd expect that to get broken come the start of next week with that big budget we do now have and he also scored the fastest goal at 24 seconds into a game and going forward a little bit more apparently it was our run for the middle of the season that set us on our way I do think they mean that run around November and December just prior to the winter break and going forward to where the new stuff happens in our end of season review and I think this is around about where it comes as you can see there we picked up the record points haul in the two Bundesliga and got up to a national reputation making our way up to the Bundesliga and then we hired an assistant manager we sold Lucas Search signed Sebastian Escobar and we had a guy on the next gen list as well in Escobar and that's all that happened in terms of our additions to that manager timeline which to be fair hasn't been too useful a feature in this year's game it is fair to say and having a look at if there's any changes to the overall best 11 just need to find exactly where it is there it is the only addition is Alessandro Dorenzo so our starters are Krapakas Zimmer, Eagles, Eder in search alongside Ernesto in defence. Kachala and Heinke these days in the midfield. They have now switched this to a 4-2-3-1 instead of our previous 4-3-3. The attacking midfielders are Atilgan, Cueto and Krasnicki. I don't know if he was there last year, but still up front. It is Jamal Ziani, that new addition. Dorenzo makes his way on to the bench. And going for a little bit, we can now bring you some results from that relegation playoff between the Bundesliga and the two Bundesliga. And it is FC Cologne who will stay up. They picked up a free one win on aggregate there over Werder Bremen. So it does mean those guys stay down in the two Bundesliga going down to that division. And we can see the teams coming up will be Sandhausen and Hanover. Very, very even though that division this year, only 57 points was what won the league for Sandhausen. And a quick reminder of the teams who are going down, that is Hamburg alongside Bochum. And going forward a few weeks, we do have the results from all the European finals. Now the Champions League final did not involve a German team, but it was Man City after extra time who beat PSG 2-1. Of course, you know this before because they're already in the Champions League for next season. But Eintracht Frankfurt 3-1 over Tottenham in the Europa League final. And down the Conference League, Hoffenheim were here. They suffer a 1-0 defeat after extra time though to Southampton, albeit those guys already were going to be in the Europa League for next season. Unfortunately, don't have an update on the eighth position if that is also going to make its way into Europe with the coefficient situation because no updates on that despite the fact I have now gone forward to the 1st of June. But I think that will do it for this season of the Leipzig Loco, our seventh one and our first one up in the Bundesliga. And we did enough to get some European football for next season. Also, quite a nice transfer budget to work with for the start of next week as well if you enjoyed that episode and this season of the series then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back at the start of next week for hopefully a very busy transfer special 28 million pounds more or less in the transfer budget and just over 300 thousand in the wage budget I'm hopeful there can be a big remake of this squad here and we can really improve the overall depth while still keeping a couple of players around who are needed for European registration but to be fair I think we can really do a lot of work on the squad in this transfer window get rid of quite a few players and bring some good better ones into the club so hopefully there'll be lots of activity on Monday in that transfer special so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers